appreciate this privilege of being a part of this very appropriate service this morning. Thank you very much, Reverend Neil, for the arrangement you have made. This has been as fine a service as I have taken part in in my many long years. Uh, I, too, at 18, rushed to join the Air Force in order to escape from my father's farm. My father was a pioneer in Saskatchewan. He farmed with horses, and I have despised horses ever since. I can hardly wait to get aid from <laughs> to get into the Air Force. My two older brothers had already gone. Uh, my parents had uh, seven sons and a daughter, and we three older ones uh, were able to enlist and be in the Air Force. I see that I have. Uh, on the program as an address, and fortunately, at my age, I'm in my 94th years, I have uh, given most of my addresses over the years, but I'd like to just share with you uh, an anecdote, a story uh, based on Matthew uh, in the 16th chapter in the 24th, 25th verses. Those who would save their lives uh, will lose it. And this is a story of an, an escape in World War II. And I'm just going to read you the story. Uh, a young Jewish widow and her two small children had been living in Paris, but with the fall of France, the Gestapo had extended its roundup of Jews to that country. She made her way as carefully as possible to a little town near the Swiss border where she had heard there were those who could help her escape. All day she had wandered around the town looking about and without success, looking for some sign of the assistance. In the evening she was back in her little hotel room, tired and discouraged. The children were asleep and there was a knock on the door. She opened it to confront a young man who said, if you are interested in a hike in the mountains, be at the cemetery on the far side of the town at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. All day she waited, resting as well she could, trying to keep the children amused in the confinement of the tiny room. And thus she had taken the children for a stroll in the market. And then as the darkness deepened, she had made her way to the cemetery. At 10 o'clock, the hiking party started off. She carried the youngest child, holding the other one by the hand. The path was rocky, but at first not too steep. After an hour, the moon rose, and she could see that there were 21, plus the guide and the party, mostly women, two children besides her own, and four elderly men. The guide allowed a brief rest, and then they pushed on. This, this time, the pain rising much, the path rising much more steeply. After a while, an elderly man ahead of her stopped and sank down. The guide came back to see what the trouble was. I can't go on any longer. I'm too old for this. You go on, just leave me here to die. The guide replied, I understand, Grandfather. The way is very hard. Do as you wish. But could you give your last remaining strength to one of the children that they might live? Could you carry one of the children until your strength is gone? The old man agreed, and with difficulty put the smallest child on his shoulders, and the party moved upward again. Several times this experience was repeated. An older member of the party felt too tired to go on, wanted to be left behind to die. Each time, the guide persuaded one of them to give their last remaining strength to save one of the children. Finally, as dawn was breaking, they reached the summit of the pass and began the descent. At around 11 or 10 o'clock, a very weary but joyous party of 21 refugees and a happy guide entered the Swiss village in safety. Yes, not a single member had been left behind. 
And the person who wrote the story concludes it with the verse from Matthew, he who would save his life will lose it, but he who will give his life for my sake will save it. And as we think of war and of those who have given their lives that we might have save our lives, we give thanks on this Remembrance Day. Thank you, Lord, that we can remember and give thanks. Amen.